The dual mobile is a particular type of motorhome which is designed for two people to go camping in together and it was de designed by a couple and first of all they gave it to Deathlifts and then Deathlifts did a uh, version which uh, with a overcab and then they went to uh, Hymer to do this version which is the integrated version. Now there's two sizes as you can see here. Um, obviously Deathlifts and Hymer are both owned by the same company, both part of the Irwin Hymer group. So there's two sizes. This one here is 779 centimetres and that one there is 699 centimetres. So there's a good 80 centimetre difference. Which one you want to see first? You want to see the big one. All right, we'll go and see the big one first. So, first thing I notice, there's a much bigger garage on the bigger one than the smaller one, as you would expect. But hey, look at the size of the garage on the smaller one. That's pretty good in any case. I mean, enough for anybody, I would say. Now, this one here, let's get some of the facts in. 146,000 euros. Well, you can get a pretty good house for that, or you can get a tiny flat in London. No, you wouldn't get a tiny flat in London, forget that. So, 779 centimetres long, 230 wide, inter external height, sorry, 315, internal height, 198, at uh, 3,660 kilos, giving 840 kilos payload on a four and a half ton basis. Let's have a look inside. Now, both of these vehicles have been put in the sleeping position, the day position, if you like, the non-driving position. So, what you've got, you've got your uh, driving bits down there. When you arrive at your destination, uh, you pull down the, uh, the, the beds, and then you've got your sleeping arrangement taken care of. Now, is this a good idea or not? Well, it depends how you travel. If you're constantly on the move, then it, it mightn't be such a good idea. But if, like myself, and I, I go somewhere and I stay there for quite long periods, I mean, for me to actually move on after, say, three or four days is, is I wouldn't say unusual, but it doesn't happen all that. I find a place, I stay there, I like it, I like to be there. It depends what you know, it depends what you like. If, if it's that type of way you live, uh, if you're using it as a sort of a house, which you can move, then this is a great setup. It mightn't be if you're constantly moving. So um, obviously it's all a matter of taste and what you're looking for. So uh, you've got the beds down there. You've got some fantastic underfloor storage. Let's have a look. Pull this one up like that. And under there, you've got your electricity. So you've got easy access to that. Good to have it indoors and not in the garage. Let's have a look at what we've got down here. Oh, it's a bit like Christmas, this. You never know what you're going to unwrap. There, you've got a deep storage. Double floor, meaning it's going to be much warmer. Good for insulation. Now, you've got a uh, chest of drawers down there. And here we have something which you could actually use for hanging space. Now look at that, you've got this extra space down there, it's, it goes below floor level, it incorporates part of the double floor, which I think is quite clever. That's for the electronic, bring the, uh, the bed down. Bit of hanging space there. And also, on the other side there is a toilet. There you go. Close the door. There's me. Shower. Toilet there. More under floor storage. Kitchen. Large fridge. Oven. And fantastic sitting area with this I, I think this sort of, uh, sort of uh, how can I describe this it's sort of like a windowsill isn't it sort of thing it's a big windowsill it's great you can put some plants up there uh, if you like the glass like that I think that is also you know that looks really really good 
and uh, for those of you who want space to do a spot of entertaining, you know, bring people around, that is also it's very good. And you got a bit of storage there as well. I think I did this wrong. I should have shown you the small one first because that's what we're going to see now. <laughs> There's the telly. Okay, let's go across and see the small van now. So let's have a look at some of the details on this one. Okay, right, so this is like 25% cheaper, 100 and in fact even more, 110,000 just under. Okay, this is the important things. Seven meters in length, 222 wide, 296 high, uh, 198 standing height internally. Okay, the in weight is 2,980. Two which will give just over 500 payload on a three and a half ton basis. So you can put it on three and a half tons, and 500, I mean, you easily, you can fill your water up, you can uh, fill, it, fill it up with fuel, you've still got about 250 kilos for other, more than that indeed, for other things. You know, all your waste water's in there. It's 500 kilos should cover anybody. But if that's not enough, if you want to sort of, Go in the haulage business or something. Well, you can put it up to uh, three thousand eight hundred fifty, or even four and a half tons, should you so wish. Right. So you've got the same layout up here. Underfloor storage, but not for the electronics. So you can keep, you can keep uh, quite a lot of stuff in there, I think. Double floor. Yeah. Got the shower there. This time the hang space is on the left, not on the right. Toilet in there, closes like this. Let's open the door. Underfloor storage, same fridge, kitchen here on the right. You're working at the kitchen here, for example doing your cooking let's put move all this over here there we go and you've got your table here I think that's convenient bang you work there left hands on the table without moving that's uh, that's pretty good I think in a motorhome got the sink there and you can come down here and sit down here got this ledge Put some stuff out in it. You know, I'd like to have some plants in mine. I'm not really so much keen on flowers, although I do appreciate flowers. But I like I like to have some herbs in my motorhome. I, you know, when you move those, the trouble is they all sort of move around. I, I put them in the sink uh, as I move. I feel that they might just stand up, might might help them uh, a bit better. But well, as a, as a rule, it tends to work. And now I'm sitting in here. Now bear in mind, this is the smaller. This is cheaper, but I appreciate it's well over 100,000 euros. That's a lot of cash. But I find this a little bit more to my taste. Why? I'd rather be in the other one to live, of course. But a seven meter vehicle, this is shorter than the vehicle I'm currently using. Yet it seems it's got all this extra space. It's far bigger. It's a TARDIS, isn't it? It's far bigger than my vehicle, even though mine is longer and it has the same width. So that is thanks to the height uh, that this vehicle has. So it's, it's much higher than my vehicle. And so I'd rather drive this one, and I know you'd rather own the other one. And this is the com this is the uh, compromise you need to make when you're in motorhomes. It's a compromise, and I get people criticising me for saying, "Oh, I don't want an extra beds or uh, this, that, and the other." Uh, and people seem to think that they can have a small motorhome and then they can pack um, ten meters worth of equipment into a six-meter motorhome. You can't do that, and um, uh, even if you get slide out, you know, it's, it's not really particularly um, uh, possible. This is, to my way of thinking. Um, uh, the sort of way I would like, I'd like, I'd, I'd like this, I would like this motorhome. This, this is something I really, really like. And if, 
um, something stuck between which one would I rather have is one of the ones with the bed at the back or the bed at the front but I, I really like the style of this uh, I think for two people it's it's really very very good anyway just show you a bit of the lighting as well for example above, above the kitchen they get a bit of appreciation because the lights are on here we're in a, a, a hall a caravan salon got the radio up there I must admit, what's the key on these radios in um, motorhomes? I think it looks a. Sometimes, the, okay, I appreciate it's a Ken, it's a, probably an expensive Ken, would I? I don't know. But uh, it's, it doesn't quite look right, I feel often. Uh, anyway, that's just my opinion. Maybe you think of something else. Somebody said, a comment I got, and said, why is it always about what your opinion? Well, there's a very good reason for that, because I'm doing the video. If somebody else were doing another video, it'd be about their opinion. That's uh, anyway. There you there you go. Um, write down which one you'd rather have, but write down the reason, right? Because as well. So if somebody said to you, you have either that one or this one, and, and by the way, if you say that that one, you'd sell it and then buy this one. That's not a good reason. So if you had the cash, uh, which one would you go for?